<clears throat> At AMD, we believe in supporting transparent, independent coverage that helps customers make informed decisions. Ah, do you then? Well then, why the HE Double Hockey Sticks didn't you want to send us an 8 gig version of the 9060 XT? Oh, it was based on regional market demand. Well, the last time I checked, we have a global audience, so um, unless there's no demand for a review in the region of Earth, I don't really get that explanation. No, the more likely reason is that you were afraid that we would roast your 5060 competitor as hard as we roasted the 5060, so you put off sending it until we wouldn't have time to test it before the embargo. But we can talk more about your shenanigans later. First, the 9060 XT 16 gig promises to be the best value card with a 60 in the name in about half a decade, matching the 5060 Ti 8 gig in performance, outdoing it with double the VRAM and beating it on price, which sounds great, but it also might not be the right thing to buy. And I'll tell you why after I tell you something you do want to buy from our sponsor, Rocket Money. Take back control of your finances and start saving with Rocket Money's subscription canceling, bill negotiation, and budgeting features. Get started for free using our link in the video description. <music> 1080p is both the most popular gaming resolution today and the most popular excuse for shipping kneecapped 8 gig cards like the 8 gig RTX 5060, which we purchased for this review since Nvidia really doesn't seem to want reviewers testing those. But with all that said, the truth is, if you are playing games at 1080, AMD and Nvidia are probably right. It is enough for now. But remember guys, this is the minimum spec for new AAA titles, and these are cards that cost 300 plus dollars. Anywho, Across our suite of games that exist today, the 9060 XT performs admirably, but not spectacularly, keeping up with the 5060 Ti cards, which cost at least $30 more, and asserting a commanding lead over the anemic 5060 non-Ti. It outperforms its last-gen counterpart, the 7600 XT, by more than 30% most of the time, which is enough to highlight how truly awful that card was, but not enough to make the Intel Arc B580 look like a bad value. Intel's really standing out with their Battle Mage architecture. Of course, we would have loved to give you guys 8 gig numbers, so this is merely conjecture, but at 1080p raster, you can expect pretty much identical performance numbers because it's essentially the same card sans half of the memory. If we find time to throw one on the bench, we will have that linked at LTT Labs down below. Okay, so what about the value proposition? Well, that depends. See, the 9060 XT actually comes in three variants. The 8 gig one that didn't arrive on time, the base clocked 16 gigabyte model, and the OC variant from Sapphire that was sent to us. This one has higher power draw and boosted clocks compared to 16 gig non-OC cards. But other than that, all of the variants are built on the exact same Navi 44 GPU based on AMD's RDNA 4 architecture. This new architecture brings a bunch of improvements that you can get a deep dive into in our 9070 series review. But here's the short version. Big improvements in ray tracing and AI that bring these cards up to speed, almost with Nvidia, in non-traditional forms of rendering, and a host of other improvements that allow them to sometimes even beat Nvidia in traditional raster. Despite its similar sounding name though, these new GPUs are substantially cut down compared to their bigger brothers with about half as many compute units as the 9070 XT. Basically they did this, which means we have half the memory bus width, but benefit from keeping the same IO and 16 PCIe Gen 5 lanes. That last point is key for gamers who are holding onto older systems where a by 8 interface like on some of Nvidia and Intel's cards, can result in a measurable performance loss. Oh, there is one thing I lied about on the IO. Interestingly, this card only has three display outputs. Now, most of you declared this to be a non-issue after the announcement, but it is the first time that I've seen a $300 card in years that didn't have four outputs. I digress though. 
To compensate for the cut down die, AMD bumped up the clock speed so that you'll get a bit more than literally half of the performance of the 9070 XT, which is also why the card draws a bit over half the power, in line with the 5060 Ti 8GB that AMD positions it against. And in Combustor, our card seems to be right in line with the 5060 Ti 8GB. But interestingly, the story's a bit different in F124. In this racing game, AMD's latest pulls an average 174 watts with a maximum spike of 225 watts. By comparison, the 5060 Ti 8GB averages around 121 watts. Now, we don't know if this behavior will show up in every game, but this is enough for us to recommend going for a slightly beefier power supply than the 450 watt unit that AMD recommends. Thankfully, this is still relatively low power draw, meaning that these cards are pretty easy to tame. And even loaded by a power virus like Combustor, our cards stay both cool and quiet. Let's talk 1440p gaming. AMD claimed 6% better gaming performance than the 5060 Ti 8GB at 1440, but Looking at our raster results, we just don't see it. They score a couple of wins in Alan Wake 2 and Last of Us Part 1, but is it really that impressive of a win when Nvidia's 8 gig cards can't complete the test and you just didn't submit your 8 gig card on time for testing? Especially when we factor in that the 9060 XT 16 gig trails behind the 5060 Ti's and honestly doesn't even look that stellar against the 5060 in the remainder of our games here. If you're wondering, by the way, about how the 5070 compares to all of this, we didn't retest that card for this review, so we didn't want to include stale numbers, but it's a little worse than the 9070 non-XT from back when we reviewed that. Moving on to ray tracing. Despite the massive leap in RT performance that came with RDNA 4, AMD is still unable to match their direct NVIDIA competitors. In 1080p RT, the 9060 XT falls well behind the 5060 Ti 8GB in our suite of tests, which is sad. But what really jumped off the charts to me is Nvidia's embarrassing loss here with the 5060 not even able to keep up with the 4060 Ti. I thought they had improved the ray tracing on Blackwell. What the heck happened? And in 1440p RT Cyberpunk, things don't look much better. Maybe we can find a happier story in productivity? No, not really. I mean, the nice thing about having 16 gigs of memory, if you do, is that it allows you to dip your toes into AI without being as limited. I mean, look at how all the eight gig cards fumble as we load up a larger model. But even with 16 gigs, AMD isn't even close to Nvidia in terms of performance in our machine learning tests. It turns out, haha, <laughs> software support is important. And that only becomes more clear as we move beyond AI to Blender. Optics go brr and HIP go Adjusting focus to content creation though, we see big improvements gen over gen from AMD, and they even beat Nvidia in DaVinci Resolve, though they trail behind in the more popular Premiere Pro benchmark. All right, well that's the performance. So this has been a big load of meh so far, but hey, getting 16 gigs of VRAM and 5060 Ti-ish performance for a theoretical $30 discount, that's something. It's just, it's tough to justify the $50 jump over the 5060, whose price is tough to justify over a kick in the groin. I mean, to AMD's credit here, FSR 4 has made huge strides, meaning that other than multi-frame gen, which <clears throat> a lot of you aren't that into, AMD has near parity on most of the features that gamers care about. Even their video encoder is almost as good as NVENC these days. They just need to work on third-party support for the, all of this stuff. So at the end of the day then, I don't know, I'm left kind of frustrated. In recent years, AMD has slowly but surely caught up to Nvidia in terms of performance and features, but they've also caught up in terms of their crappy behavior. Last gen, the 7600 XT had 16 gigs and the 7600 non XT had eight gigs of VRAM. It was super easy to tell what you were buying from the name of the product. This time around, they've lumped both cards together with the same XT name, and then at the same time, as far as we can tell, intentionally made it more difficult for media to review the eight gig version, which could lead to consumer confusion. So AMD, your commitment to the press words, kind of meaningless at this point. And speaking of meaningless promises, you still haven't managed to get your previous cards into the sales channel anywhere near MSRP, which means you've effectively given away any credibility that you might've had there too. So bottom line, 
If you have 350 bucks or more to spend, you can buy a 9060 XT, I guess, but I wouldn't recommend the eight gig one if you want to get a longer lifespan out of your card or you wanna upgrade your monitor to 1440p and whichever one you choose, just don't smugly tell yourself that you're supporting the good guy because AMD's actions speak much louder than their words and they seem content to just draft behind Nvidia, both in good ways and bad, rather than aggressively jump out in front to delight PC gamers who don't have 800 plus dollars to spend on a GPU. AMD, this was kind of your shot. Nvidia is super distracted at the moment and unless you do more, your GPU division is going to continue to only resonate with a small niche of users who don't mind owning a punching bag. And I would deserve to be punched in the bag if I didn't segue to our sponsor. Squarespace, whether your business is just getting off the ground or you've been in the dark ages of cold calling for a while, a website will give you that extra push to take things to the next level. That's where Squarespace comes in. Their Squarespace Blueprint guided design system gives you the ultimate starter pack to get the creative juices flowing with professionally curated layout and styling options. Then, once you've laid the foundation, use their Fluid Engine Editor and its code-free drag and drop elements to customize to your heart's content. Your website also comes with integrated SEO tools and advanced analytics so you can optimize what's working and identify what might need a little tweaking. You can even set up your website to take payments via credit card, PayPal, and more. So head on over to squarespace.com LTT for a free trial and save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. If you guys enjoyed this video, go check out our review of the 9070 and 9070 XT. It dives a little bit deeper into the architectural changes with RDNA 4.